welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new around here, my name is Michael, AKA Dr. Cellini, and I'm a senior interventional radiology resident physician. And you may have noticed that I am no longer on IR right now. I'm actually on my last diagnostic rotation of my entire life, probably. So it's kind of crazy because this is essentially it for me. So I started this whole diagnostic radiology journey way back in 2016. I first started with a surgery internship in New York in 2015, 2016. And then now four years ago almost, I started this journey into radiology. When you go through this whole matching process way back at the end of medical school, you think that you still have so many years ahead of you, but then one day you just kind of wake up and you realize you're pretty much almost done, which I, I pretty much thought would never happen because it just, medical training is just so long and so arduous that sometimes you feel like you're going to be training for the rest of your life, which you kind of are, but it's actually coming to an end right now. So pardon me if I'm getting a bit nostalgic for you all, but it's just a little crazy to think about that five years ago I started residency and now I'm ending residency. Now I still have another year of fellowship or my final year of residency, but I'm not gonna be at this hospital anymore, which means I'm going somewhere completely different and I'm almost done here. Like my job is done here, it's crazy. So like I said, I started this whole journey four years ago in radiology. I went into radiology with an open mind I pretty much had no idea what I wanted to do. I was open to doing any of these subspecialties, whether it be breast imaging, musculoskeletal imaging, neuroradiology, pediatric radiology, cardiothoracic imaging, et cetera, et cetera. And obviously I had an interest in interventional radiology, but I wasn't dead set on it until I got here. So I was about 80% sure I wanted to do IR when I got to residency, but I wasn't dead set on it. Because after all, diagnostic radiology lifestyle and interventional radiology lifestyle are completely different. Most people go into radiology because they feel like it's going to be an easier specialty. And what I mean by that is you don't have to take call as a diagnostic radiologist. Well, sort of. Because you still have to read studies overnight or maybe later in the evening, but you're not gonna have to come in in the middle of the night and get paged to read a stat CT because you're always gonna have someone in the hospital to do that, either at your practice or in your hospital group. Now on the interventional radiology side, there is a good chance that you will get called in multiple times while you are on call and some people just don't like that. And to be honest with you, I don't really like getting called in either, but it's my favorite subspecialty of radiology. So. That's why I did it. The chance of getting called in was one of the main reasons that I still had that 20% reservation of not going into interventional radiology. And I actually had my first IR rotation at the end of my first year. So that was like, I think March or April of my first year. And after that rotation, I was about 98% certain I wanted to do IR. And then I had another rotation about halfway through my second year of radiology and that pretty much did it for me. So I obviously loved my first rotation and also my second rotation as well, but I never took call until a year ago. So once I started being in the fellow call pool, I started to get a taste of what being on call is really like. And I can see why some people who go into diagnostic radiology don't wanna kinda of live that lifestyle because the IR lifestyle is pretty similar to a surgeon. It isn't as demanding, but you do get called in for emergencies all the time. Not every time you're on call, but I would say a good percentage. And the percentage you get called in depends on the hospital you work at, whether it has trauma, uh, what patient population it takes care of. Uh, all, those, all those factors kind of weigh into how often you get called in. Either way, for me, I just kind of love the field and it was my favorite out of all the subspecialties of radiology and that's why I chose it.
So why the heck am I even telling you guys this to begin with? Well, I think I'm getting a bit nostalgic because I won't be doing any more diagnostic radiology after pretty much the next two weeks because I'll be moving to New York City, starting my IR fellowship in which I won't do a single bit of diagnostic imaging whatsoever. So effectively these last two weeks are the last time I'm going to be reading studies as a diagnostic radiology resident for the rest of my life. So the weird part about all this is my residency is ending during the kind of tail end of the COVID pandemic, which makes it kind of anticlimactic, unfortunately. And I don't mean that to be like, oh, woe is me. I don't get to graduate residency like usual because obviously there are some crazy circumstances currently, but it's just weird. That's the only way I can describe it. It's anticlimactic. You just have this expectation like you're gonna feel like you made it and you're gonna have a big celebration and everybody's gonna come together and it's gonna be some great accomplishment. But then you realize we aren't going to have any of that. Residency just effectively ends. Usually we have a big graduation and a big celebration for our radiology residency. Every single resident and faculty kind of comes together and we have a huge banquet where we kind of roast people and, you know, have drinks, have a good dinner. It's awesome. And then we all go out afterwards and kind of celebrate together. We get to say goodbye to our friends and colleagues we've worked with the last four years. And we also get to say goodbye to our mentors who have mentored us through this crazy process that we call residency. Now, we don't get to do any of that. And I don't even get to say goodbye to my mentors. I don't even get to shake their hand and thank them for helping me through this absolutely exhausting journey. I don't get to thank them for teaching me every single thing they know. And I don't really like that. It's just how it has to be right now. And it's kind of anticlimactic. That's the only way I can describe it. So I'm literally finishing residency and I can't say goodbye to people or hug them or shake their hands or hang out with them one last time before I leave. It just kind of ends and then we go our separate ways and we likely won't see each other again. So yeah, I now have about two weeks left on this cardiovascular imaging rotation and then I go to vascular surgery and do a three week vascular surgery rotation, focusing only on the endovascular techniques because it's good to see how they do things and they do things a little differently because they are trained a little bit differently than IRs are. So it's nice to kind of get their take on things and how they approach certain cases, especially endovascular cases. And I only have three weeks of that rotation and then I am officially done with residency which is crazy. So basically I have four and a half weeks till I'm officially completely done with residency and before I move to New York City, which is crazy, I'm moving to New York City in probably the worst time anybody could ever think of, but I signed this contract a year ago and I'm still excited to go because New York City is awesome. I love New York City, I used to live there. I love the program I'm going to and I get to focus 100% on my craft, which is interventional radiology. Super excited. And yeah, that's about it. So hopefully this video wasn't too nostalgic for you all. I just can't believe it's all coming to an end and this is my last time ever reading diagnostic studies. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If I like them, I will respond to it. Make sure you smash that like and subscribe button and follow me on Instagram if you don't already. Turn on those post notifications so you are notified when I post a new video, which is usually about once or twice every week. Also, I'm doing a giveaway coming up, but I'm trying to wait for all of these companies to get back to me because they're kind of on hold for all the COVID stuff. So if you want to get a jump ahead on the giveaway, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and also follow me on Instagram. Those are about two out of the three or four things you'll need to do to enter my giveaway. So go ahead and get a jump start on that. I will let you know very soon. And that is for my 100,000 subscriber giveaway, which I'm getting to be a little late now. It's going to be a big giveaway though, so go ahead and subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram. Anyways, that officially concludes this video. See you all on the next one.